So we're gonna start a little bit of a, I guess a, what would you say, exact video on my car and how we turbo it? Yeah, like uh, I figured he keeps asking me all these questions about different things and how it works. He's never gone through the process of taking a naturally aspirated motor and turboing it. So I thought like instead of just answering his questions every single day, like every time he has a question that I think is worth a video, we're just gonna make a video on it. And that way like, I mean, you guys can learn while he's turboing his car. I feel like it's a good thing so well hopefully it'll answer a lot of questions because i feel like i have common questions that everybody knows how a car, turbo car works and they want that last little bit of the exact information because we even go over like in-depth in-depth stuff when it's just a one-on-one -on -one conversation yeah. so so far what we have to you guys know my car has the f20b in it we are getting ready to go turbo on it we're not buying a kit we're actually piecing it together and we're going to build turbo ourselves so so far we have probably three of the seven things that I may need to turbo a car, maybe eight or nine, probably coming after that, because there's always extra stuff. Everybody would know that's building a car. So, so far what we're gonna start talking about is the wastegate, because quite frankly, I really don't understand how the wastegate works. We have this one here that we're gonna talk about, and Jeremy's gonna break down and explain the last bit that all of us need to know on how the wastegate works. Okay, so the other day, the question that he asked me that started this whole situation was, uh, actually, it was on the last video, if you guys watched it, he said, well, how much boost are we going to push? And I said, well, like, as low as we can. Like, I want super low, like 3 PSI, and his face was like, oh my gosh, like, why would we only want to push 3 PSI, you know? And uh, then it dawned on me that, like, maybe a lot of people don't understand that, like, when you get a wastegate, uh, the base spring pressure determines, like, how much boost the, the wastegate's going to make. Like, you can't make less than the amount that the actual spring makes. So inside, I guess I'll just tell you guys how this works. So as your car makes exhaust pressure, it goes through the turbo and it will keep making infinity boost through your RPM band, right? And in order to regulate it, they made wastegates. The wastegate just vents some of the gas coming out of your motor before it gets to the turbo so that it doesn't like make as much boost to infinity, you know? So um, inside the wastegate itself, you have the, the spring, and the spring, they have just different colors for different PSI, and you just pick the lowest PSI you want to run on the car. So on his car, I have some crazy ideas. There's a reason why I went with this super huge wastegate. Nobody really puts this big of a wastegate on a car like his typically, but I, I have some ideas that come from like more of my drag racing days. Regulating boosts and regulating power levels is kind of everything. So when you go to pick out your wastegate, make sure you pick out the lowest amount of boost that you want on the spring. So if they have like a five pound or three pound or seven pound, a lot of times seven is like the lowest, or if you can order custom springs with your wastegate, just make sure you get one that'll do the boost you want. So a lot of cars, like his car will already spin the tire naturally aspirated in first gear, right? So we'll have to bring his RPM launch limit down and let him take off at a lower RPM to not even burn the tire. And then we're talking about putting a turbo on top of that as, you know, however many horsepower, like three PF PSI might be like, you know, 30 or 40 or 50 horsepower. That's already like gonna be hard to control. Like, so we're gonna get, you know, better tires, other things to stick it. But effectively, you don't want the turbo to work against you. Like, I think the stereotype, especially, he has a front wheel drive car, not everybody's gonna have a front wheel drive car, but in a front wheel drive car, you know, Traction is such a hard thing to get anyway. You kind of want your power to be controlled. Okay, so spring sets your lowest PSI. Now on on his car and on every every one of these ones with the uh, external wastegate, the boost comes into the side of the port and pushes this diaphragm up, and it like opens the valve to let the gas out. So, however many PSI your spring is, as soon as the boost hits this and gets to that level, it will open this and vent it and it will keep the car at that boost level. So I think there's some misconception on how a boost controller works. Um, there's a couple different ways. The most simple way is you could, if you made a hole between here and your boost source so it bled some of the boost off, if your turbo is pushing 7 PSI to the bottom of the gate but it vents off 3, then it will take 10 pounds to open and now you have 10 pounds just by venting a little bit off before it gets to the gate. So that's the easiest way to turn your boost up. The other way is the way we're gonna do it on his car, 
which is a, an electronic boost controller, and we're going to actually run boost to the side of the gate and to the top of the gate, and when it hits our desired boost pressure, if we want to make more, we're just going to slowly add with a pulse width solenoid a little bit more boost to the top of the gate to hold it closed longer. So that way, like in first gear, he'll have his super low amount with the spring, in, and we may ramp a little at the end of first gear, and then second gear we can add like more boost because once the car gets going, it can handle a little bit more power to the ground. Yeah. And then third gear more, and fourth gear probably put like all of it, you know, all the boost. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. What other questions did you have about wastegate stuff? Mine was definitely what the, if the spring is stiffer, is it you're letting out more boost or quicker boost? That was, how do the different springs dictate or control how much boost is coming out. So if it's a stiffer spring, are you letting out more boost or are you letting out less? Or, you know more. what I'm saying? Yeah, you're letting out more. So like the, the stiffer the spring is, the harder it is to open. So the more boost it takes before it opens. Mm -hmm. And uh, once it opens, then it stays regulated at that PSI. Okay. So, well, shoot, I mean, that's really like all I wanted to say about wastegates. The only other kind of strange thing about his situation in particular and something that we're testing I don't I mean I think it will work it works well on other cars I've done but this is a super huge waste gate this is like a, a 60 millimeter and the normal size that you put on a little t3 turbo something about this size would be you know a 38 or a 44 millimeter but we went all the way up to a 60 because the amount of area I mean it's like a two and a half inch opening it's gigantic it's the size of some people's exhaust the the area that allows us to vent uh, boost out is so big that we should be able to control it at like such a low PSI. Like, so if we're already having traction issues and I know I want to keep his whole entire first gear at like three PSI, the small gate, like if you're trying to regulate it, at some point it can't get enough exhaust gas out of that hole and it still starts to back up into the manifold, which will make the turbo spin more. And at some point, like a smaller gate, it will start to like, the, the motor will overpower the wastegate essentially and turn the boost up by itself. Um, we run into this problem a lot on motors that rev really high. Um, this is more of a common problem than it used to be because like the, the newer cars, they all rev higher. Like yeah. the new 5.0 Mustang revs to like 7,500 and uh, that just means that you're going to have, you know, every thousand RPM you're getting more and more exhaust pulses coming out. So you need a, a bigger gate to control that at the higher RPM. So yeah, right. <laughs> I wanted to show like, like with one hand and pushing down, it's yeah. not going to happen. It's, uh, Just in case anybody was wondering what the spring rate is right it's, now. It's stiff. It's probably like, you know, a 10 or 12 pounds. We're going to have to get a lighter one for him. But anyway, I, I hope that answers some questions about weight skate stuff. And uh, if you guys have any other questions, I guess pop them in the comment section. I'll try to mention them in the blog or address it later. We're going to be modifying his manifold to fit this on there. I'm sure we'll talk about more stuff with it as we go. I'll probably show some stuff in the software on, on how we're going to control the boost. Don't judge. We are, uh, we are doing this the cheapest we possibly can. On purpose, actually. I believe that manifold actually flows really well. And uh, I think we can make some good things happen with it. But Anyway, just kind of wanted to share a little bit of like information about wastegates. That way anybody who's turboing soon can maybe have a better idea of what to get. I think it's important, very important to say. We pay a lot of attention to the comments. So if you yeah. want us to say something or you want to ask something, you think it's something that everybody would like to know about, it's a good question, please comment and we will talk about it because we're just trying to yeah. figure out things that everybody else is trying to figure out. Yeah, I'm pretty active in the comment section. It comes right to my phone and so like every day I'll go through and, and usually try to answer everybody back. So, all right, I guess this is good for this time. So, uh, Take it easy and I guess we'll see you guys later. <laughs>